everyone. It's me again, Andy Ruffett. I'm still doing a cock and bull story because it's 20 pages. And we're on page 11, and I'm with my friend. Taylor Bloom. And she's going to be reading the story with me. So without further ado, let's begin. Ready. Nope, it's not raining, she said when she came back in. At least I won't be driving in the rain. At Uncle B's aunt's house, the woman served not just drinks, but amazing cakes, cookies, and pies. Uncle B was really hungry and tried to eat everything that was offered to him. My mother saw him cramming his food with his mouth with food and thought to say, um, you, are, you are what you eat. Soon every food he ate, he became. He was a cheesecake that gobbled down an apple pie, and then he was an apple pie gobbling down a chocolate chip cookie. Before the night was over, Uncle B, the, uh, the cookies, aunt began piling dishes, cutlery, and glasses into the dishwasher. Once the machine started, its loud, droning ear t uh, irritated everyone. Put a sock in it, cried my father. <laughs> the, uh, the cookies aunt obeyed and stuffed a sock into the washing machine. Soon the dr uh, droning noise stopped. Suddenly, one woman let out a gasp. I'm late for my audition for the part of Alice in Alice of Wonderland. She ran quickly for, uh, for the door. Thank you, Miss Patricia. It's been a lovely evening. After thanking the cookie's aunt, she quickly zipped up her spring coat because it had gotten chilly outside. Break a leg, we all cried. Thanks, she said, and repeatedly smashed her right leg against the door frame until it was broken. We watched her hop away, clutching her mangled leg. She was brave. She hadn't let out any wail of pain. Everyone had uh, told, everyone I had told to break a leg had cried because of the excruciating pain. Soon it was time to go home, and we all thanked the cookie's aunt for a lovely evening. It was hard to stuff the cookie in our car, but finally Uncle B was able to fit. When we arrived home, the cookie sighed. Well, that, um, that party's in the bag, he said. My father was the one who had to drag the large black garbage bag filled with plates, cake, party hats, everything from the party. The cookie lay on the couch, spreading crumbs everywhere. Bob, if you don't stop spreading crumbs, we're going to be cleaning up uh, crumbs until the cows come home, stated my mother. Moo! I looked outside and saw a herd of cattle running down the road. I could see that there was a small pasture in the distance. <laughs> I must have been where they were headed. I think they're here, laughed the cookie, <laughs> spreading more crumbs on the couch. <laughs> don't you turn a blind eye away, said mother. The cookie stared at her, one eye closed, smiling. I'm already blind in one eye, he cackled. He bounced up and got up from the couch. I think I'll drive for a bit, relaxes my muscles. I don't think that's such a good idea in your condition, the cookie nodded. It's okay, I know the ropes. In the end, I was the one opening the driver's seat door for him because the cookie had no arms or legs. Soon he was instructing me to begin tying knots of rope together that were under the dashboard. I lit a match, and as the fire burned the ropes, the car started. Soon he was driving away, just sitting in the car, moving the wheel with his teeth. I never knew you could start a car that way. Well, I'm going to the bathroom, said my father casually. Five minutes later, we heard him screaming, This bathroom is so small! There's not enough room to swing a cat! Look! He grabbed the orange cat, which somehow had made it into the house, weak and feeble, and swung the poor feline around the bathroom. It smashed its head into the four walls and even crashed its face into the sink. My father let go of the now dead animal. See? What did I tell you? My mother just nodded. I was horrified. I couldn't believe he would actually swing a helpless creature around the bathroom. What are we going to do with that? Asked my mother, pointing to the orange furry creature on the tiled floor. Well, it serves Uncle B right to just drive away like that. He deserves a nice welcoming gift when he returns. I think we should move the dead cat, I tried to say. Close, but no cigar. He should move the dead cigar. S dead cat, said my mother. Well, I didn't want a cigar anyway. Fine. My mother took a cigar out of her purple purse, and my father lit it for her with his shiny green lighter. Thank you, honey. Mom, you don't smoke. I don't, honey. But I need to prove a point, she said as she puffed away. I watched, saddened, as she allowed the black smoke to enter her lungs. Soon, though, her face cringed, and she realized the cigars had an awful taste to them. She washed the cigar in the sink and threw it in the garbage. Then I saw the cookie drive back up the driveway. He had a hard time getting himself out of the car, but finally he managed. The cookie rolled into the house just as we left the bathroom. He yawned and headed for the bathroom. Soon we heard him cry, Holy shit! There's a dead cat in my bathroom! No shit is holy, said my mother as we all ran to the bathroom. I was just about to wash my face until I saw this! How can you wash your face? questioned my father. You're a cookie! 
That would, that would just moisten your face and make you crumble more easily. The cookie glared at my father. Who put this cat here? He asked. We all, much as I hated to, shrugged. Well, it wasn't me, and so it's not my responsibility to clean it up. Then I guess you can't cut the mustard, stated my father. I can cut mustard, you crippled man! My father grasped, but I think he was more shocked that the cookie would accuse him of placing the cat there. Watch me! I will! The two men headed into the kitchen. Soon the cookie was sprouting arms and legs, and took out a jar of mustard from the fridge. He dumped some of the yellow contents onto a plate and easily cut it through with a knife. I never knew food products could sprout limbs. There! My father clapped. Very good. So dispose of that cat. The cookie scowled and headed back to the bathroom. And I feel like playing the piano. I watched my father hop to the piano bench and sit down. He rolled up his one sleeve and began to play with his one hand. And that concludes another section of a cock and bull story. Tune in next week when we'll do another section. Bye!